Hello guys, welcome back to another video and couple of videos from now on is going to be all about neural networks. So what my plan is to first make a very simple neural network like this and then we move on to some different or some uh, complex architectures, uh, neural network architectures like CNN or RNN after we have completed M MLP which is multi-layer perceptron and it is uh, also the easiest kind of neural networks, uh, network that we have. So what I am going to do is I am going to make a neural network that is MLP from scratch without using any library like Keras or TensorFlow or PyTorch. So I am going to just make it using NumPy, uh, using NumPy mainly. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about what a MLP is and how we are going to build our basis for the MLP. So uh, without wasting any more time, let's get started. So guys, these circles are nothing but uh, we call them as uh, neurons and these are the basic building uh, block for our MLP. Okay, uh, and MLP, is, uh, MLP stands for multi-layer perceptron. So we are adding multiple layer of a single perceptron and a uh, single perceptron you can also consider it as a neural net uh, or a neuron. Okay. Now let's uh, let's see how exactly neural network is going to find out the output that we need from it. So I also uh, talk about it uh, talk about this in my previous video, but let me just uh, get it from starting. So if you have seen my series for the uh, for logistic regression, you might remember all of this. So what we do is uh, in logistic regression is uh, to get an output like y or y hat which means the prediction. So what we do is we do theta 0 plus theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 and it goes on for theta n xn. So this is what we do in logistic regression and after finding this value what we do is we pa pass it to a sigmoid function okay we pass it to a sigmoid function to get our output so what is all of this uh, let me just uh, get you familiar with all the terms that i'm gonna using uh, i'm going to be use uh, i'm going to be using in uh, a neural network so theta zero is nothing but theta zero is bias theta one is w1 which is also known as weight theta 2 is w2 theta 3 is w3 and uh, this is this so this is these are the terms and x1 x2 x3 and xm uh, all of them are same okay and if you'll see the formula closely now like look at i'll take a look at this formula so what we are doing here we are multiplying the theta i with xi from 1 to m or in our case from 1 to n it doesn't matter and then we are adding the bias so this is what we are doing we are multiplying each of them together and then we are adding a bias in this so this is what we are doing okay and after that we are passing into a uh, sigmoid function okay so that part is here called as activation activation can be anything else uh, ca can be anything like it can be sigmoid function or it can be any other function like ReLU but we are going to talk about that later but we are going to get a activation function so that our output which is the prediction can be uh, calculated so if you haven't post my logistic regression series then i'll highly suggest you to go back and uh, watch my uh, linear regression series and logistic regression series so you will get an clear idea like how things are working here because I have explained everything in very detail in those series okay I have explained why everything is working correctly uh, like the way it is working why uh, they are working so what is the meaning of theta 0 what is the meaning of theta 1 or theta 2 I have explained everything in those kind uh, those series and I have also explained like why uh, or how you change the if you change the parameters of theta 0 or theta 1 you will get the correct uh, output so I have explained all of them. If you want to watch them, then please I suggest you that you should go and watch those series out. Okay. So this is uh, what we are talking about here is 
this is only a single perceptron so let's suppose that this this perceptron was only this where this is x1 x2 and x3 okay and if you'll see uh, it has a line from here to here it has a line from here to here it has a line from here to here so this is x1 x2 x3 then we will have some weights here w1 w2 w3 okay and then we will add some bias here then we will pass it to a activation function whatever it will be and then that output is going to go out into other neurons now all of this is going to happen with the this part also with this part also with this part also now let me explain you in a little bit more details uh, more detail so let me just draw some stuff okay uh, so let's suppose we have this x1 we have this x2 we have this x3 and this is our two and these are our two neurons so what we are going to have we are we will have a connection from this to this <clears throat> and this to this or oh, let me just show you uh, this part right now. so what is this if you will closely see this is nothing but w1 w2 w3 then we will add this is uh, this part uh, the submission of all of this uh, the submission of all of this and adding a bias so submission of w i x i plus bias it is called as z okay so this will be the output and then we will pass it into an activation function which is uh, and that value is called as a okay so this is what we are doing here now i think that it is clear okay uh, now what we are going to do here is these values w1 w3 and uh, w1 w2 w3 these are specific for this neuron you cannot use these values uh, in this neuron so for that what we are going to have we are going to have uh, let's uh, let me take some other color so let's take black yeah so we are going to have uh, uh, other values here like this and as uh, uh, we have some other uh, so this uh, this w is going to be something else like let's suppose w4 w5 w6 then again it will have a different bias then again it will have an activation function so it will produce the z and then it will pass through an activation function and that will go through a and i'm saying it again activation function is nothing but the sigmoid function and if you want to see why we are using sigmoid function then you should go and check out my uh, logistic regression series basically what is the use of uh, logistic uh, if you will uh, talk in the terms of uh, neural networks activation function allows that whether uh, we should fire this neuron or not okay whether uh, the output of this neuron should go to other neuron or not this is what uh, if we talk uh, uh, in terms of neural network this is what we will get but if we will talk in the terms of uh, let's suppose uh, logistic regression so what we are going to get is that logistic uh, sigmoid is a non linear function okay is a non linear function and what can happen when you add uh, or when you multiply or when you add different uh, different uh, as in uh, multiple non linear functions together then it produces even more uh, non linearity or it brings even more non linearity in our neural network so let's suppose we have some graph like this in which we have a very complex problem like uh, uh, let's say we have some parts like this okay and then we have uh, we have like this so this is going to be a very complex problem for our normal machine learning method so what uh, to solve this what we need is uh, non linearity so uh, if we have a great non linearity then what is going to happen uh, so it is going to generate a boundary line like this 
okay it is going to generate some it can be uh, something else but yes you can say that it is going to generate a boundary line like this and it can only happen because of the non linear functions okay so let's suppose we have a non linear function uh, so uh, uh, basically our activation function is a non linear function and when we will add multiple kind of non linear functions then it is going to generate even more non uh, more non linearity which is going to be helpful in getting the right output i hope that it is clear but uh, you should not worry about it uh, once we will get in, uh, deep into the network then i will explain all of these terms so just uh, right now take this video very lightly and uh, you should watch this video and the whole series like uh, two three times because uh, only and only then you will be able to identify all the things or uh, you will be able to clear all the things in your mind okay so let's move on so as you can see here i said that okay this is uh, this weight is uh, these weights are going to be different and these weights are going to be different now the output of uh, this layer which is this let's suppose we have now three more uh, neurons in the next layer so what it is going to do the output of this is going to here and the output of this is going to be here again this this and yeah this is it so now the activation the a value is working as x1 x2 and x3 for these neurons and this is how it is going to work now uh, to get the correct output what we need uh, in linear regression what we used to do is uh, we used to update so uh, in the uh, logistic regression so what we used to do is uh, we used to update all of this theta 0 theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 we used to update all of this uh, update all of this to get the correct output okay so this is what we are going to do here what we are going to do here is we will have our input let's suppose this then we will have our next layer so what we are going to do uh, as in our case uh, theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 is weights and uh, the theta 0 is bias so we are going to update all of this and as we are going to update all of this our output is going to be better uh, now how we are going to update this we are going to use uh, back propagation for this and i have already explained what a back propagation is in my logistic or my linear regression series i have explained everything in detail like how or why it affects the values or everything i have explained in detail so you should go and check that video out or the whole series so i have uh, done that there so i'm not going to explain everything in like why it is going to affect the output but yes I am going to explain, uh, I am going to show you how it is going to affect it. Okay, uh, so, so how can we save our uh, uh, weights, uh, uh, like how I can we save them? So let's suppose uh, we have this, we have this, we have this. Okay, and then we have this, we have this, we have this. So let's suppose this is the layer small l and this is the layer small l plus 1 okay or you can say this is the layer l and this is the layer k you can take anything so what we are going to do this is going to be 1 2 3 this is going to be 1 2 so we can say that w 1 1 w 2 1 w one then w one two w two two w three two so these are going to be the weights and this is how we are going to represent them and how can we store all of them uh, basically what we are going to use is we are going to use a 2d matrix 2d matrix is going to be the shape of three times two so three times two and why we chose three times two because we have three uh, layers in this or uh, three neurons in this layer and two uh, neurons in this layer so we are going to have some values like this we will have three rows and two columns so this 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 and this this okay so we will have this now you can say that uh, this value is going to be here this value is going to be here 
and this value is going to be here and all other values are going to be here in this part so i hope that it is clear what i am doing here till now i am just explaining you how it is going to work okay uh, or what to uh, what notation i am going to use so this is what i have uh, done here i think that it should be clear now if you will watch this video clearly i guess that you will get the best idea of how to create a neural network or how to even understand a neural network so as you can see in this image what we are going to do uh, that we just saw we are going to expand that all of that in this part okay so i guess guys this is uh this is uh, good and this is what we have done uh, up till now that we have understood how a neuron is going to output a value and why it is going to generate the correct values so we have explained all of this we have seen how weights are going to be stored and yes uh, so so the weights is going to be stored in a 2d matrix and the bias is going to be stored in a 1d matrix so the one bias for this one bias for this one bias for this one bias for this okay so i hope that it is clear now One more thing uh, that I want to talk to you guys is that in the final layer, in this part, it is going to be a little bit different than earlier parts. Why it is that? Because we will have our Z here and we will have our A here. But then we are going to find the lows. Now, how do we find the lows? Uh, let's suppose, let's take the example of linear regression. So what we used to do is, here is that we used to uh, subtract the subtract the predicted value from the original value to get the lows and then we used to add them all up so it was something like this, uh, this uh, y hat minus y whole square so it was uh, used to something like this okay so this is what we are going to do here and that we to find the lows what we are going to do is uh, when we will get the a this a is going to be our uh, this a is going to be our predicted value and to find the lows we are going to subtract it from the uh, we are going to subtract it from the original value that is also called as mean squared error but right now we are using mean square error but uh, later on i will change this uh, i will change this uh, uh, loss function into some other loss function for better results but you will see so as this was it for this video and i hope that it is clear if not then please i suggest you go and watch this video two three times because it is not easy to understand all the function and uh, functioning uh, at once and if you don't have any idea like regarding how matrices works or anything like that then it is even going to be more difficult so please uh, have a good idea of how matrix multiplication is going to work how logistic regression works or how back propagation works and how all of these things are working and i have as i said earlier uh, i have already created series on uh, li uh, linear regression and logistic regression where you can get the clear idea of how everything is going to work so uh, i guess this is it for this video and in the next video i am going to show you how our uh, loss function and basically our back propagation is going to work so what i am going to teach you is how we are going to update these weights and the biases so how we are going to update them because without updating them we cannot get our correct output. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.